Hey everybody, welcome to how to play Warhammer Underworld's Gnarlwood. Now this is um, designed to be a sort of introduction for beginners to show you a step-by-step -step playthrough of a game um, so you can see how to play Warhammer Underworlds in its newest edition. Now I've also done a GMG review of this rule book, so if you're a veteran Warhammer Underworlds player and you want to see what's new and interesting in this edition, you can check that out um, as well going up today. This is designed to be a walkthrough if you have just come to Warhammer Underworlds um, and you want to see how to actually like play through your first game, what comes in the box, how to set it up, how to play it, um, and the core mechanics of playing with the Rivals deck system. Now the Rivals decks are all pre-constructed decks. There's actually four of them in here. Two unique ones for the two warbands provided for um, the Gnarl Spirit Pack and the Sons of Velmorn. But there's also two other ones, Tooth and Claw and Daring Delvers, that any warband can use. Uh, making this box kind of cool for existing Underworlds players as well. And allowing this box to have some variation. You get other decks you can play through with. Um, to show different ways uh, to play with the same warband. So uh, we will go through right now. I'm going to show you how to set up the boards. We're going to roll off um, and I'm going to um, basically walk you through your first game of Gnarlwood, Warhammer Underworld's newest edition with their two new warbands. Here's the Gnarlwood box and everything that comes in it. Now, one of the great things about Underworlds is there is nothing required outside this box set to play the game um, and to play it several different variable ways. Uh, most of the starter sets are played this way and this newest edition, Gnarlwood, is no different. So this new season of Warhammer Underworlds is basically a self-contained game. Now, what do you get? You get two warbands. Uh, now, they come in pre-colored plastic, so you can tell them apart on the table. Brown for the Gnarlwood Spirit, or the Gnarl Spirit Pack, sorry, and uh, sort of beige for the Sons of Kel uh, Velmorn. Um, and you have like an undead and a sort of like uh, unchained sort of beast spirit totem warband as your two forces that you can pick in the box. Now I've painted these with Citadel Contrast paints. I'm sure there will be um, on Warhammer Community and Warhammer TV a ton of videos the same week uh, or next week on how to actually paint these guys up in a similar way. But uh, they are wonderfully detailed miniatures and contrast paints let me paint them basically on a night. So super easy to get done. They look great. Uh, and if you're a collector of Warhammer miniatures, they're just like a group of cool character models basically uh, that you can throw into your collection or play the game with. Now you also get your rivals decks for each of them. These are pre-constructed decks uh, with a full set of 12 objective cards and 20 um, power cards. Now they are like sort of put here. If you do end up mixing up your cards, you can look for the faction symbol to see if you've uh, mixed them in somewhere else and find them all. But they list them here as well as what's in the pre-constructed deck. Same with the Sons of Elmorn. Then you get your actual cards for each of the units you're playing with. And I'll do a brief sort of description of how these things work. Uh, you have a bunch of statistics. You have your faction card, a picture of the miniature, so you can not just have to go off the art. Um, your Grand Alliance right there, which is the sort of like overlarding faction that you're in. In this case, it's Chaos. Uh, you have a leader symbol. If you're a leader, you'll notice it's missing here. And a wizard symbol with your power, your wizard's power, your casting power. Um, if you are a caster. So you can see your Sarakar Blackwing. Um, he's the leader of the warbands and he has his casting value. Now the rest of the core stats, how many hexes you can move when you move, uh, what number of defense dice and the symbol you're looking for when you roll defense dice and your damage pool, so your wounds, how many wounds you can take before you die. Then you have attack stats. He can fight at two hexes range, so counting away from himself with his wild staff. He has to roll two dice looking for hammers or crits, of course, when he's attacking. Um, and he does two damage to anyone he hits when he does it. Then his casting is a raptor bolt. It uses his magical value looking for, I can't remember what it's called, swirlies. <laughs> at a three range doing one damage. Um, he has these two following things. This is inspire step. If he uh, removes a spirit counter from his card and he can ch choose to add or remove one basically. These guys are all possessed by animal spirits. And when you activate them, you can put a spirit counter down. Um, or remove a spirit counter. So the turn you remove a spirit counter, they inspire. So you have a full control base over when these guys get better and flip their card, and you'll see they get enhanced stats on the other side. The overcome ability, all four of these guys do, basically when they hulk out into their um, animal forms, they all get different sorts of bonuses. So struggle is, at the start of this fighter's activation, you can give this fighter one spirit counter or remove a spirit counter. All four of them have that. His overcome is while the spirit has one or more spirit counters, he has plus two move, it's a beast, it's flying, it can't be inspired. Uh, Goral Spinehammer, you can see he's a bit tougher than his boss. He's got four wounds, uh, a three movement because he's slower, but he uses a more um, a more common symbol. There's two shields on this instead of one dodge uh, for his defense, but he only rolls one dice. 
Can also take four wounds. His hammer is only one range, uh, two dice looking for hammers, and his uh, damage is three though, so he's hitting really hard. And he has the knockback special rule. When he hits someone, um, he pushes them back an additional hex. His inspire is exactly the same, his struggle and overcome um, are exactly the same, except he has a slightly different like effect. While this fighter has one or more spirit counters, he's plus one defense, he gets to roll an extra defense dice. He counts as a beast and cannot be inspired. His plus two move is a beast, flying and can't be inspired. Beast is cool because some of their cards trigger off of it, but it also means that you can't typically give them upgrades because beasts can't um, hold objectives or be given equipment cards. Then there's Crimson Kira. Uh, she's got a movement of four, so she's faster, one defense, looking for shields, and three wounds. Her clawed axes can be used two different ways. She can either do it at one range um, for three uh, attack dice looking for swords and two damage, or a Berserk Assault uh, with the Unleash ability. Um, she's got the Grievous one and Scything if this fighter's a beast. So when she hulks out and becomes a beast, when she does her overcome, she's a beast, she gets plus one move, and she can't be inspired. And then she gets to use this attack form with the critical effect if she rolls a crit when she attacks of Grievous one, Scything, and being a beast. Uh, loop and Long Cut has basically the same core stats as Kira, so four move, one dodge instead of a shield, and three health, so slightly less defendy. Uh, he can long cut with his spear, uh, which is a three range. He throws it, two dice looking for hammers and impact, meaning he gets to um, uh, get a bonus to damage when he makes a charge action. So it, it goes from one to two damage. And then his silent stab or his knife, it's one range, three attack dice looking for swords and two damage. He has struggle and overcome, and when he overcomes, he's plus one move and he counts double supports as successes. So he counts as if basically he's in cover. Um, and he's a beast and can't be inspired. Well, these have inspire effects, obviously, where when you flip them over, they get slightly better. Now, some of these guys, uh, their core stats might change. In this case, there's not a lot of difference. Uh, he goes to two defense, which is cool, instead of one. Um, and his long cut gets better with more attack dice. Uh, and then Silent Knife gets Grievous one all the time, so he's plus one damage if he gets a crit. Also supports friendly beasts, and he gets impact when he charges, just like before with long cut. Uh, you can uninspire them though by getting them to go back into beast form if you want. Uh, she gets uh, clawed axes always having cleave and grievous, so she ignores shields when she attacks, and on a critical she gets grievous once she does an extra damage, goes to three. Uh, and then Goral gets to struggle as well, and he has Beast Breaker, friendly beast within two hexes, can hold objectives, and can reroll one dice in defense. So basically, if you uninspire him, or you, you inspire him and leave everyone else's beasts, he makes them a little bit better when they're nearby. Uh, he's got knockback two and stagger on his hammer at that point too, but it's the same core attack stats. And then Wizard Man, he's basically the same, except he gains cleave on his Hadouken, his uh, Master Bolt, his Raptor Bolt. Uh, and that's really it. That's his big change when he flips These guys are kind of a speed force. They want to go fast, hit hard, and even if they die, they can still earn a ton of victory points, which is, of course, your glory counters over here. For the Skeletons, it's led by King Morlock Vermin. He's your leader, or Velmorn, sorry. Uh, he's got three hexes to move, one defense dice looking for a shield, and four hit points, or four wounds. And then his Baleful Tomb Blade doesn't do that much damage, but if he gets a crit, it's Grievous for three damage. So it's one attack die, two looking for hammers. And if an attack action results in a critical hit, if this fighter was the attacker or supported the attacker, then he inspires. That's the same for all these guys. So if they gang up on somebody or they just roll a crit to hit, they inspire. So it's a little bit dice dependent, um, but you can get a whole chain of these guys inspiring at the same time. Now his ability is his uh, deadly command. It's a reaction after this fighter's activation, give this fighter a command counter. And while he has one or more command counters, it is supporting each friendly grave guard automatically. Clear these counters at the end of the phase. So, no matter where he's in the table, he counts as supporting people, which means he'll inspire along with them if they roll a crit, and they get to count all of the support faces on dice as successes. Four guys are his, or these three guys are his sons. <laughs> There's uh, Thane fourth and last, the worst of his sons. He's got three move, one defense, and three wounds. His great white blade is one range, two dice looking for uh, swords, and then two damage, and he has trip on a critical. He staggers. He makes the people more vulnerable. He can reroll attack dice against them. And then sibling rivalry, after the final power step of the round, inspire one friendly fighter that has this ability. This guy basically can inspire for free. Um, he just gets to do it. Uh, so everybody can, like all three of the siblings can inspire uh, one of them at the end of the turn for free.
Uh, then we've got Marshall Falk Velmorn, a Graveguard. Same core stats, basically. He does one damage with Grievous 1, so if he crits, he does an extra damage. Uh, and then Helmar the Hewer, he's got Grievous 1 as well, and his White Axe. One attack, two dice, looking for one damage. And then, uh, like these guys, uh, all can inspire on crits. And of course, one of these guys each turn gets to inspire at the end of the last power step, just because they're, they, they hate each other, because they're bad sons. And there's Sir Jedrin Falseborn. He's kind of the Jon Snow of this group. He's got uh, move three, one defense, but five wounds, because he's a bigly boy. Uh, he's kind of like if you mixed Jon Snow with the mountain, and then you've got one, uh, one in range, two attack dice, looking for swords, and three damage. He's the illegitimate son and bodyguard of uh, Sir Velmorn, and also crits will inspire him. He inspires up to hitting on hammers instead, which makes it slightly more constant that he's going to um, hit. And he becomes a slayer. You can reroll one dice and he attack rolls those fighters' attack actions that target a large fighter, so someone with five or more wounds. And then Sleepless Sentinel, while this fighter is adjacent to a friendly fighter, this fighter supports that fighter. Even if that guy's not um, next to a uh, an opponent, he counts as supporting. And all three of these guys, when they inspire, become better at fighting. They get cleave, shield up, and an extra damage on all their attacks. Uh, so scything, grievous, so extra damage, and he attacks everybody nearby and can keep the trip. This guy's shield up ability gives him a guard token after he makes an attack if he gets a crit, and then the same with him. Tokens just let you count everything as successes. So if you get a guard token, that's one of these guys right here, then you can count, no matter what your symbol is on your defense, you count both symbols as defense successes. And then staggered is, when you're staggered, your opponent gets to reroll an attack dice against you. Stuff that comes in the box. You're going to get your objective slash uh, feature tokens. He's kind of his cover. Um, these are uh, used throughout the game for different effects on objective markers and also to provide you with cover and to delve for power cards when you're playing. Uh, you get your glory tokens, and this is glory when you earn it. You earn it by killing guys. If they have five or more wounds you get an extra one and by completing your gold cards here your objective cards you also spend it to attach your blue cards which is your upgrade cards during the power step and other times as well these are extra feature tokens for playing multiplayer games which we won't get into but they're also used when you kill people during the game to loot them and then finally over here you've got your damage slash generic tokens these are used as a placeholder for any tokens you have to place like for instance their beast tokens or spirit tokens rather you put those down um, or if he has a command token you use those for the same thing snare tokens certain effects will place those too and then finally, your last two decks, which is the Tooth and Claw plot deck and the Daring Devilers plot deck. Now, we're not going to get into these today, but they're just additional ways. They're full decks. You don't have to do any construction on them. And you just use your character cards for the warband and this deck in replacement with the Rivals deck for your warband. And they're universal. Any warband can use them and play a full game using the Rivals system. You get your scatter token. If something needs to scatter, you're going to roll a die, an attack die, and that's the direction it's going to go. So in this case, it would go that hex away. Um, you're going to get your attack, defense, and magic dice so the greener defense the amber are attack and then these are your magical dice uh, all of them are different facings critical is basically the trump facing it's like rolling a six and then you have whatever success you're looking for plus a single support and a double support depending on if you have friends nearby when you're making the action uh, then finally your move and charge tokens if you make a move action you can only move once per turn and if you make a charge it's a move plus an attack and you can't really do anything else unless you're the only model left alive Full-sided boards, which have the slightly less and incredibly spooky parts of the uh, under the gnarl wood as your playing surface, and they'll get deployed during the game, um, during the setup step. And then finally, your activation tokens, and these right here allow you to track how many goes you have during the three turns of the game. At least a rule book, which is going to go through, and you can see the GMG review of it, but the setting of the gnarl wood, what's happening under the gnarl wood in the living mountain, uh, and then how to set up and play the game, which we're going to go through right now. Turn counter and the dice roller are mine. They're just handy for the course of the game, basically tracking one turns one, two, and three, and then also keeping our dice separate when we roll attack and defense dice to see who's got the most successes. All right, so we are ready to set up playing the game. So in the game sequence, first it's set up. We reveal our warband. So I am using, obviously, the Gnarl Spirit Pack, and you are using the Sons of Velmorn. Um, and we reveal that to each other as the first phase. Then we place our boards. So starting... The game means rolling off to see who places the first board. So we roll four dice of any combination of attack and defense. And the person that gets the most criticals first is the winner of the roll. One. Broken then by supports. Broken then by double support. So we've tied, which means we need to reroll. So I'll try again. I got no criticals and two double supports. You got no criticals, no supports, and no double supports. So I actually win this roll. Now the winner of the roll chooses who picks their first board and places it. So I'm going to make you pick a board and then place it down. So you can pick any of the four sides of the two boards in here and place it as the first board. The second player then defines the battlefield by placing the opposite 
composite board um, adjacent to it. Spooky side? All right, so I get to choose either of the sides of these. Now, boards have a bunch of different features on them. You can see the one that Mike picked has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places you can place fighters. The maximum more by size than any of the fighters in this game is seven. But you can pick seven spots to put your guys. Two cover hexes that allow you to count double supports as supports. Now, there's other kinds of hexes that could be on the table as well. So, for instance, in this one, there's a block hex, which can't be moved through or seen through. There's another cover hex and a lethal hex, which if you get moved into it for any reason, you'll take a point of damage. Is how I'm choosing the Hellraiser side of this, I guess. Let's just put this down. Now, when you place it, you can place it in any combination as long as at least four hexes are combined. So I'm going to offset this slightly. I kind of want the lethal hex somewhere near you. Yes, yeah, so we're going to put it over like meow. Slide it over slightly, and there's at least one, two, three, four, five hexes touching completely, forming full hexes, so that's a legal board setup. Place our feature tokens. So you take numbers one through five of the objective tokens, place them face down, because there can be objectives where it matters what number you're on, so you don't get to see it in the beginning. And then starting with the player that placed the first board, so you, you get to randomly pick three of those, and then I get the remaining two. And then you place the first one. Now these can be interacted with over the course of the game. They have different effects like scoring points um, and letting us delve for power cards. You place them anywhere you want on the board, not within two of another feature, so another one of these tokens, um, or adjacent to a board edge, unless that's the last place you can put it for the last token. So you put yours there so it's not against the board edge, and right now it's not within two of anything. I choose, choose, choose to put mine here, also in your territory, because the board you place is considered to be your territory for deployment. So that one's also good because it's not against the edge and it's not within two. I'll place this one, let's say, there's not really a great spot for me to put it on your end. So I'll place it over here, I think. And then you get to place the last one. Thanks for going deep. Going deep. All right, it's in there. It's over and they stop being feature tokens and become objective tokens. So when they're feature tokens, they provide cover. When they're objective tokens, they can be interacted with in different ways, like scoring objectives from your gold deck here or from um, the delving part of the power step where if someone's on one, you can flip it and make it a feature and then draw an extra power card. We draw our cards. We shuffle our objective decks and our power decks and we each draw a card. So three power cards, or sorry, three objective cards and five power cards. First off, I've drawn my power hand. Now you'll see there's different symbols up here. The ones with a little sword are power cards. They're kind of like instants. You play them uh, during the power step of your activation and they usually allow you to put different effects out. They might, during your activation, affect an enemy model or your models to move them around or to damage or cast spells. Uh, during your opponent's turn, you can also lay them out to prepare for your next activation. They all have their name, their faction they're tied to, because this is from a, a Rivals deck, so they're my faction cards, uh, and then their effect down here. Then there's your upgrade cards. They typically have to be spent through glory. Sometimes there can be a reaction for them that allows you to put them out for other reasons, but mostly they have to attach to guys. Now, because my guys transform into beasts, typically I can't give them a lot of upgrades until they've inspired and turned back into their normal human form, because they're just free freaking out. They don't want to carry all the magic goods. Pretty good mix of uh, gambits and upgrades, but if you get too many upgrades, you won't be able to play anything in your first turn usually, and you do, are allowed a mulligan. You can shuffle everything, discard the five cards, draw five new ones, and then shuffle um, the discarded cards back into the deck to start over. I won't do that this time though, because I'm happy. Are you happy with your cards? Yeah, I'm good with mine. All right, so then I get to draw three objectives. And you'll see yet again, their symbol of what they are, so that's the objective symbol, a faction symbol if they're not universal, their name, and then their score. And there's different kinds of scoring. Some have different requirements, um, and there's two types of objectives, end phase ones and surge ones. Surge score when the trigger happens, the thing that you're trying to do, um, and then you get to draw a new one immediately. End phase ones happen at the end of uh, the whole turn after you've done all four of your activations. If you qualify for the reasons to score that, then they have the amount of glory that you typically earn when you score them. With our cards drawn, now we place fighters. We roll off again using the same roll off procedure. Most crits, then most support than most double supports. One. You got one crit, I got no crit, so you win that roll. So you choose who places the first fighter. Now the person who finishes deploying fighters first gets an extra crit in the first activation phase to sort of balance off the fact that you can see where all their guys are. So you don't really have a choice about me getting that because you have five guys to my four. So it's usually worth your time to just make me go down first so I have to commit a fighter. Yeah, you might as well. Okay, well we're gonna go with big boy. We're gonna put Goral Spinehammer, my least likely to instantly die guy, right here. My fighters on an objective hex, so the ones with the symbols. 
And we go back and forth, deploying fighters until they're all deployed. So now Mike's gonna go and put one down. Vote at least likely to go <laughs> He is. So you put down, what's that guy's name? Uh, Helmar the Hewer? Helmar the Hewer, yeah. Sick. Uh, I'm gonna put down Crimson Kira. She's gonna hang out over here. Back to you. Hmm, we're gonna do... Marshall Falk Velmorn is gonna go here. <laughs> Such fancy titles. Right. Uh, let's chuck down uh, our good friend Lupin Longcut, the Spearman. Might as well throw down Sir Jedrin Falseborn. <laughs> this is the Jon Snow of this group. Who this is, is yes. The illegitimate son of uh, the king. He's real big though. He is a big boy. He's kind of like the mountain. No. The Mountain 2.0 after he gets all jacked up and zombified. And then I'll put down my leader, Sabakar, or Sarakar Blackwing. He's hanging in the middle of everybody. The last of our grand titles, King Morlach Velmorn himself. And he shall be then Thane, fourth and last. <laughs> my favorite character. <laughs> the fourth son that no one cares about. He's sort of the cousin, uh, what's his name from, from um, Succession? Cousin Greg? He's the cousin Greg of this group. <laughs> So now we're deployed, so we are into beginning the action phase. Now there are three action phases that make up the game. At the end of the game, the person who scored the most glory is the winner. So to see who goes first in the first action phase, there's another roll off. I get a bonus success because I finished deploying first. Or bonus crit, rather. So you got two crits, I got one, but we actually tie because I got my bonus crit. However, I have no supports, neither do you, but you have a double support. So you end up winning in the end and you can choose who activates their first fighter. We have four activations. Each activation also includes a power step and then we go to the end phase. So where would you like to go? Me go first or you go first? I think I'm gonna go first. Not a terrible idea. So now you have options, and the steps of a turn go as such. First, there's the start of turn step, which triggers a reaction step, an inspire step, and a surge step. Do you have anything that happens at the start of your activation? I do not. Okay, so now that we're into the action step, you get to pick one of four actions for your fighter to do. You can guard, which gives them a guard token, so they can count everything as successes. You can move, which is to move their, hex, uh, their movement in hexes. You can charge, which is move your movement in hexes and then make an attack action, which gives them this token, um, or you can pass. It sounds like fun. All right, so of the four actions, move, attack, guard, or charge, and then the final option, of course, being to pass, you can, oh, and you have some bonus actions too. If no one can go, or if you don't have any fighters left, you can also draw a power card, you can discard an objective card and draw an objective card, or like I said, you can pass. So you're gonna get aggressive, and what kind of action is that gonna be? Uh, I think we're going to just go ahead and take Sir Jedrin Falseborn here. And he's going to make a charge action. The big boy's going in. Yeah. All right. So uh, So his movement is how many hexes? He's, so he can move three hexes. So you can move him three hexes in any direction. He's going to go once, twice, thrice. No, not Kira. All right. Yeah. Going after yeah, Kira. Kira. And uh, I'm going to make my attack. You go into the attack step. So when you do a combat sequence, you declare your attack action. So which of the ones on your card are you going to use? Well, I'm going to use my Great Tome Blade. And that rolls how many dice? It rolls two attack dice. Okay, looking for... Looking for swords. Okay, and just like a roll off, it's it going to go crits, then we break it with swords, and supports as successes, and then double supports as successes. But you don't have any supporting people. Uh, so that means that you're just looking for crits and swords. Now I have one defense dice on Kira. She's looking for a shield. So you get to roll, and we oppose, and we count up who gets the most successes. I got a dodge. I got nothing. Hooray! So you get a charge counter, because you yep. made a move plus an attack. And I didn't get hit. So now, if you'd gotten a tie, so for instance, we each gotten one success, you'd have the option of driving me back, uh, which is a draw. Or if you'd gotten a success, you would have inflicted how much damage? Three, three damage to me and just straight up killed her because she only has three wounds. Kira didn't die, and that means that we are now able to go over to the power step. So you look at your hand, you are the active player, so you pick the first power card you want to play and play it if you will, or just pass. Play. All right, well then, uh, you will pass. I am going to actually play a ploy. I'm going to play Vicious Blow. Uh, the first range one attack action made by a friendly fighter in the next activation has Grievous one on a crit, or just plus one damage if that fighter is a beast, and one or more surviving friendly fighters are not beasts. So I'm gonna play Vicious Blow, and that's gonna last until the next turn. You have another chance now, another window to play a power card or I delve. I still, still have nothing to go. 
Okay, so uh, I don't have any ability to buy anything else, so I think I'm all done too. So now we've both passed and that ends the power phase. Now that will also trigger an inspire step. Someone could inspire uh, or surge to draw surge cards. There's none to happen, so we are ready now to go into my activation. One of your action counters to say you've done one of your four activations for the turn. So now I flip mine and I get to pick a fighter to go and do an action. Well, I, I got a plus one damage right now, right now and we're into the start of activation sequence. So I had to pick a fighter and at the start of activation sequence, I can give them a spirit token if I want them to hulk out. I don't really want them to hulk out. I think uh, good old um, Lupin Long Cut is gonna go. Go six when he charges. So he's gonna go six, I think. Uh, so I'm gonna give Lupin Long Cut a spirit token that transforms him into a beast. So he will gain a plus one move. He counts uh, double um, uh, supports and successes to my attack and defense rolls. And I'm a beast and I can't be inspired. But if I remove the token somehow, then I can be inspired. But five. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five to here, or five to here and be in cover. I like being in cover. Oh no, I'm already, when I'm a beast, I'm already in cover. So let's go to there. It takes it away from you. Why not? So I'll stand in cover. Uh, so that's my charge. So my move action's done. That does uh, trigger a reaction window. Do you have any reactions on movement? Uh, I don't. Okay. So I'm gonna hit you with my silent knife. Uh, it is going to be just a three dice attack. So three of the Elodi or the Amber Dice. Looking for swords. Two damage, but I got my Vicious Blowout, so I'm plus one damage right now because I'm a beast. So three damage. And you are rolling your defense, which is... One block, or one... One block looking yeah. for a shield. So I got a hit on my sword. And I you got a support. Nothing. So you're gonna take three damage. Well, that's enough to kill. All right, so he gets exploded. Now when you kill a fighter, you gain a glory. Uh, and we go now into the power or the reaction step. Do you have any reactions that you can do to an attack? Fighters were adjacent to each other, deal one damage to the attacker. All right, so Velmore's Curse, that triggered off the attack action, and it's a power card that happens before the power step, right? Because it's a reaction card, yeah. so it can happen outside the power step. And it does a damage to him, because I killed you and we were adjacent. So that means Lupin takes a damage point. We put that on his card. Now, power step, I will go first, my activation. I am going to go with... Hmm. Preternatural Senses, and we are going to give it to Goral Spinehammer. It costs one glory, of course, to attach an upgrade, and now he can re-roll one of his defense dice, and I ignore the rules for cover hexes when making attack actions. Power steps, you're gonna pass. I will also pass, so it is back to you. Our second activation. My second activation is going to be, let's get, Oh, let's see if we can get Helmar the Hewer in there. Uh, he's going to do a charge action as well. So it's a move plus an attack action. Move plus an attack action. And he's going to go, I think, just to here. And we're going to see. We're kind of fishing for, for crits here. Okay. But we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. So I count my double supports as um, successes on my defense roll, but I've only got one dice looking for dodges. Attack dice looking um, for? Swords. Swords. So swords versus dodges. Nothing. Two <laughs> Double swords. All right, so how much damage do you do? It's only one. Only one, so I take a damage and go to two out of my three. You. Not gonna push me, leave me in cover. Wow, well, you're already in cover. That's fair. I'm also carrying cover because I'm a beast right now. Uh, and we're on to, so there's no reactions to that attacks, uh, and then power step. Actually, let me oh, see. actually, maybe? Nothing yet, okay. So power phase, do you have anything you have to do? Uh, I have nothing for this next power phase. Okay, so I will also, uh, I will not pass, actually. I'm going to do dueling, or dulling venom. It's a gamut ploy, choose one enemy fighter adjacent to one or more friendly beasts. The chosen fighter is staggered, and this effect persists until the chosen fighter is taken out of action. So you actually can't discard this until you are dead. So I'm gonna give it to this fella, which means I will now be able to reroll an attack dice against him. No for you to play stuff. Pass? Yeah. I'll pass, pass as well, because uh, I have nothing else to do. So we are back to my activation. We're gonna go with, I think, Kira. And she's just gonna stab you. The clawed axes. She's making attack action, so no tokens get put out. She has three dice looking for swords into the big skeleton. Now let's see if we can hit you with some stabs. I'm looking for swords or crits. I got a sword. You got a... Oh no, it's cocked. Rolled again. I think that counts as two. Sure, does it count as both? No. Uh, nothing. It's going to be two points of damage on the big skeleton. And I think we'll drive him back. I'm going to drive him back 
to there. I got more successes or Drew. Um, I get to push him back a hex away from myself and because he's charged, he can't attack again. So I'm happy with him being there. Reactions to play at this Kay. time. I have no power cards to play. It's your leader. So yeah. you're going with the King Velmorn. King Velmorn, he's also going to charge. And what, actually, he's going to make a charge action as well? Yeah, and I'm going to charge right in here. Go after the big guy. One, two. We're going to wallop him. Two attacks with two damage on a hit, looking for hammers. Okay. So you got one hammer. Now he has one defense dice, looking for either a double support. Yeah, I also have a... You have a support as well, so you get two success actually. So I have to roll a crit here to trump those. And I do! Yeah. All right, so I managed to crit, and that means a critical can only be beaten by other criticals in a, in a dice pool, and nothing happens. That's about it. It doesn't even count as a draw, so you can't drive me back. Yeah. Phase, would you like to play a power card? Well, I needed a successful attack to do much there. Uh, so I'm going to... Oh, I get to put a command counter on my boss at the end of his activation, no. Where is he? So now he's got a command counter, and that means he counts as supporting every model here. Every single one. So it's back to me, and I think we're gonna go with... Let's say the big guy. He's gonna charge. He's gonna go... One, two and hit you with a hammer. You are considered to be trapped here. If there is not a space you can be driven back to, you are not able to retreat, and the person attacking gets a free additional success in their attack roll. The boy's got two dice looking for hammers. He has knockback one and does three damage. And then your defense is one looking for a shield. So I've got one free success, and I get nothing else. Crit. But you uh, succeed as well. I succeed as well. So I cannot drive you back because unfortunately you can't be pushed anywhere. That completes my charge. Do you have any surge or reactions at the end of that uh, activation? So I do have a surge. Okay. Uh, which is score immediately after an attack action that targeted a supported friendly fighter and failed. And since my boss man supports everybody, it was a supported one. It was. So, so you're going to score, score a glory, and we're now tied 1-1. One, one. All right, so during my power step, I'm going to delve, which means because I'm on a objective feature, I will flip it and then draw a power card. And I get an upgrade window to do a power card if you'd like. Yeah, I think... Rise again? Yeah. Uh, so... We're going to have, um, I'm going to remove the command token. counter yep. and bring him back onto a friendly deployment hex, uh, give the fighter a raise counter, and then give that fighter wound counters equal until it is vulnerable, so only has one wound, wound remaining. Left. Got it. Uh, so that was this one. He gets two. He gets a raise counter. Then and then and then I have a surge based off of that. The raise counter scored immediately. Bam! I did. Yeah. All right. Then I am going to go uh, and pass, which means that ends the power phase, and it is back to your activation. Power cards? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do a Shishin infusion. Shishin. Shishin. Uh, and I'm going to heal those two damage. Nice. Now he is back to fully online. Uh, and now, now I'm done. Okay. Actually. Good. Activation. Final one of the turn. Fourth one. Let's break the mold here. Break the mold and charge? Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be uh, Thane forced and fourth and last. And he is going to make a charge on that fella. Once, twice, thrice the move. Charge token for him. And... Uh, he has got two daggers, and I will trip you if I crit. Do it. Uh, I got nothing because <laughs> I lost my command. And I have one looking for a shield. Uh, I am not beasted out right now. I get a dodge and I pass. He's on a shield actually, so I failed as well. But nothing happens, nobody got anything, uh, even though you're supported, and that means that we are done the activation. So there's an Inspire Surge step. Step, you gonna play any power cards? I have no power cards to play. I do not either. 
So then my final activation for the turn, I'm going to go with the boss, I think. He's going to take his beast token, become beastly, which gives him plus two move beast and is flying and cannot be inspired. He's gonna move uh, and make a charge action, I think, and go one, two, three, four. Hmm, I'm flying so I can move through hexes. Four, five, six. I'm gonna attack this guy. I'll attack him with my wild staff. Uh, it is two dice looking for hammers, the two range. So counting one, two away from me, I am in range. Looking for hammers and you are staggered so I can re-roll this dice roll. Not that I need to. No, nope, no, that's probably <laughs> so good. If you roll a crit, you're okay, but I got a crit and a hit. Uh, I don't think I am. Because I think even- With I... a crit, I had the hit to break the time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so you'll take is... two damage. Okay. We'll drive you back to there. We're into two damage, which means I am going to uh, start the power step with a delve. I will flip this one. And that will let me draw a card. And I got this. The Lord of Bones upgrade to the king. It is restricted to the king only. And now as a reaction after uh, his deadly command reaction, I can push each friendly game Graveguard up to one hex towards the enemy fighter closest to my leader. Okay, so that's your upgrade, and it's after the end of the activation. So we're at the end of all the activations now. Um, you have a uh, inspire step for one of your guys, where you have the the rivalries, the bitter rivalries. One of your three bitter rivals can choose to inspire. So everybody who's a little skeleton, basically, one of them can inspire. It's gonna be it's gonna be Thane. He's just so. He's so Thaney. So Thane is which one? Uh, so he that is guy? this guy. Yeah. Three <laughs> cousin Greg, the least the least like guy. Score. So starting with the player who went first, which is me. We look at all of our objectives and see if we got any of our stuff satisfactorily. So I did not get this one. I would only get this if each surviving friendly fighter is in enemy territory. I did not get this one. I score in the end phase because there's a dual qualifier. If one or more friendly fighters are on a feature token, I am. And each surviving friendly fighter in enemy territory has an upgrade. Neither of these guys have upgrades, unfortunately. So I did not get that. This one is if I remove an objective token in enemy territory or a warband takes an inspired enemy fighter out of action, which I did not do. These are surges and or. So I did not score any of those. I can now discard cards and then try to... Uh, I'm going to discard this one. I'm going to discard this one. I'm going to uh, then draw up to full. Could discard my objectives as well and just and drop to full, but I'm not going to. Okay. Your objective phase, did you score any objectives? I did not score any objectives. Okay. Um, so given how that turn went, I think I'm gonna discard my dispassionate slaughter. Cause you don't feel good about that one yet? Well, it requires me to kill three of your models. Fair enough. And that feels like it's not gonna happen in the next Just turn. yes, yeah. Uh, so I will draw this one instead. Oh, at the end of my end phase, sorry, before I'm all done, I remove all the tokens from my models uh, for charging. Charge, guard, moved, and staggered. The only staggered token that's not gonna come off is this guy's because my ploy says that it stays on until he dies. Now you remove your tokens at the end of your step after you refill your hand, up to five cards and three objectives. And then we are on to round two. So that is step one. Now we're gonna repeat these steps two more times. Right now I have a glory and you have two glory. Uh, and the third end phase, whoever has the most glory wins. Steps back from the beginning, rolling for initiative to see who's going first. I got a crit and two supports. Nada. So it is me again. It feels like the big guy's gonna go and he's just gonna try again to pound this guy down. So we're gonna go for our first activation of four. Uh, Goral Spinehammer is not gonna turn into a beast. He's just gonna hit you with his hammer. So he has two attacks, looking for hammers. You've got one dice, looking for a shield. I get a free success though, because you are still trapped. You are however supported. So you will count your support successes, even though you're Stand there. So I got a hammer. I got one, which means two hits total. So basically need a crit. Need a crit. No. You did not get it. All right. So that does count as one, but I got two. So I'm going to do three damage to my hammer. Which is enough to finish him off. So he gets exploded. And because he has five or more wounds, he's worth two glory instead of one. Then I am into my power step. So first things first, I am going to start buying some upgrades. I'm going to buy, for one, Raging Companion. Now it's restricted, you can see, to a wizard. 
Um, so I'm gonna give it to Sarakar Blackwing, and it also says can be given to a beast. Basically, this guy summons his Patronus. It gives him an additional reaction. It's an attack action, a denizen, and can be given to a beast. Uh, reaction after this fighter's spell attack action, make this attack action. So when I do my spells, um, I get a free little like magical beast that attacks. And then it's your window for one. Yeah, we're going to do a equip favored son, and we'll put it on the marshal. Got it. So he's got plus one defense while my leader still lives. Cool. I'm gonna then buy for one brute resilience on Goral Spinehammer. This gives him plus one wound, taking him up to five wounds, but it does mean he's now worth an additional. Uh, glory point if you can. Pass the next one? Yep. I will pass as well. And that's my first activation. That is the power phase done. It's on to your first activation. Favorite thing's gonna charge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Marshall Falk is going to make a charge and we're gonna target this fella. And we're gonna go... One, two, three... You have charged into my boy here, Loop and Long Cut. Yeah. And now I'm going to attack you. I have two, and I'm looking for swords. For S words? Uh, you got a support because you do have a support. Now I have one dice looking for a dodge. So if I roll a crit here, I can get this. Otherwise, no dice. Nope, I did not crit. I do count that as a success though because I'm in beast mode. So you got two successes by one. How much damage is that? It does exactly one. That is exactly enough to kill him. So he is dead. Excellent. You have a glory. I have a glory. And uh, you're in your power step. But well, so you before, that, before the power step, even, uh, I'm going to. Uh, friendly fighter is attacking. You have a, a reaction yeah, step here during the attack as well, before the power step, if you want to do something, and an inspi uh, inspire step. After a friendly fighter's successful attack action to give my leader one command counter, then push my leader up to one hex. So my leader gets his command counter. So now everyone's supported. So everybody's got a support, and I'm going to push him, oh, let's say here. Now, did you want to put down a objective marker and loot? Actually, that would be your attack reaction. So you can either put down the counter if yeah. you wanted to, or you could... No, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go with this Go one. with that attack reaction. Get one attack, one reaction per thing, basically. Yeah. But they could chain into themselves. Yeah. So no further reaction to that. But I do have a surge, which is... Score after a friendly fighter's attack action that takes an enemy fighter out of action if the friendly fighter has no charge tokens or the enemy fighter had a charge token. Surge step now, which yeah. means you can surge uh, your objective. Yeah, so I'm going to surge a Regal Repost. Uh, no, wait, I'm not going to do that one because that one doesn't apply. I'm going to do Clinical Efficiency. Score immediately after a friendly fighter's attack action that took the enemy fighter out of action if... The attack action dealt precisely enough damage to take the target. It in. sure did. So, so nothing wasted. An extra one is so an extra four one. to three. Draw a card immediately because you got a surge. All right, so that's your uh, power phase started now. Would you like to play any power cards? Uh, no, I don't think I do. Okay, I am going to go with the man, the legend, the Sarakar Blackwing. Now, at the start of his activation, I have the sort of activation step. I'm going to remove my beast token, which will inspire him. And that will improve his Raptor Bolt. He's going to make a charge action. And go one, two to here. And he's going to actually attack with his Raptor Bolt. Now it is his wizard level in attack dice, so two wizard dice. Looking for swirlies or crits. And it does two damage, but with cleave. And what cleave means is the only thing you can do to block it is going to be uh, to roll... A, um, a crit because you do not get shields against cleave and the snare cancels dodges and shields cancel or um, cleave cancels shields so I roll a crit and a swirly so a crit and a hit so you've got your one die you also have to crit but even if you do he's gonna get hit that's yep. right he's gonna get hit so I cancel that block and you will take two damage okay and that is he has one left somewhere the, no that's the hewer he's dead yeah so now I am as my combat reaction Going to place, I'm going to place an objective token here, face up, where he died. My reaction to that. So then we start, uh, do you have any reactions to the end of the phase or any inspires? Uh, nope, no, I got nothing right now. All right, so I inspired during the inspire step of the start of activation phase, then I did my uh, action phase, now we're into the power phase, and I'm going to go first. 
I'm going to spend one for Trophy of Vision on my wizard. He's no longer a beast, so I can actually attach this to him. He gets plus one wizard level, and this fighter has line of sight to every enemy fighter, even if it's blocked. This fighter does not change this fighter's distance away. Uh, I could have gotten it free for a reaction, but I wanted to place the objective token instead. So he has two actions, or two things on him now. The power phase. So then I will also pass, and it's over to you. Okay. My second. Your second action going to be a this is tricky. boss man charge yeah and who's he gonna charge i'm gonna go for your boss man okay so i'm gonna go once twice thrice take my charge token and i'm gonna hit you this is two looking for dodges and i am two looking for hammers with grievous one I crit. I got nothing. So you'll do three damage to me, taking me down to one. Inspires you, that's right. You push me back. Well, that was a big second activation. Do you have any power cards to play? I don't have any surges or reactions to that attack. And to play. Okay. Uh, then oh, we'll... sorry, I'm gonna delve this. Uh, so in the power phase, you're gonna delve it? Phase. Sure. Yeah, I'm gonna power phase. Er, Go for it. Power phase, delve that. Grab a card. Now do I have something to play? No. Well, then I think we're going to go with the big boy, and he is going to hit you with his hammer. He is wont to do. So uh, the big fella, Goral Spinehammer, is going to hit you for two dice, looking for hammers. You've got one with a shield. I got nothing. I live. You lived. Power phase, phase yep. Yeah. Um, you're first. Uh, I am not going to play anything, I don't think. Surprising swiftness! Plus two movement to the first friendly fighter other than a large fighter to make a move action in the next activation. It is already. Friend, Thane, inspired. He's, he's no longer fourth and last. And, and he's, he's gonna make a charge action too. He's gonna charge too? Where's he gonna charge? Oh, he's got five movement now. So one, two, two three, three four. four. Seems pretty good. Going for the boss. Going big. Go big. Uh, so I've got two looking for dodges again to your... Uh, let's see, you are... Doesn't really matter which attack action I do, so I will use his great white blade. Sounds great. And I got three dice okay. looking for swords. I've got two dice looking for dodges. I dodge. Uh, I'm good. I... You got you, a support. Yeah, I got a support. But so I dodged, yeah. I could push you back. I'm you not could. going to, but what I am going to do is react to that. Okay. With redoubled fervor. Play this after a friendly graveguard's failed attack action. When you do, you can remove one command token from your leader. Graveguard makes it one attack action, and if I remove the counter, I get plus one die. To so you get four the dice then. Action. So you get the attack action again. And we basically roll off again, you get four dice. And I'm gonna get four dice. Come on, hang in there, Sarakar! Get that crit! Yeah! Crit and a dodge. Ooh, I need a crit and a success. I need a crit and two hits, actually. Uh, crit and one. Yeah! yeah. So we tied again, so you could drive me back. Um... Okay. He's already inspired. Alright, so any uh, actions, or sorry, power cards that you want to play. Mm -hmm. Then I have none either. And we are into my final activation. Yeah. I'm just gonna make a move and go one, two, three. Your power step. Uh, so my power step, I'm not playing anything. Okay. Uh, I will also not play anything. Okay, so now your final activation. Everybody has charge, so I can activate somebody. To attack, yeah. To attack, and I think, who is more likely to succeed? Two hammers or three daggers? Double hammer. Okay, so your last action and who is attacking? Yeah, the boss. boss man is attacking your boss man. And you just need to get one hit to kill me. And I'm do. two dice looking for dodges yet again. I got a dodge. I got a hammer. Just one hit. So we tie again. You could drive me back. I could. I'm gonna leave you there. No okay. gate. All right, power step. Are you playing anything? Uh, nope. Everything triggers off successful hits. <laughs> All right. All right. Fair enough. I'm not either. So I went first, which means we're into the end step. Uh, and I do my objectives. I'm gonna raise and pillage, dual score this in an end phase if one or more friendly fighters are on a feature token in an enemy territory, and each surviving friendly fighter in enemy territory has one or more upgrades. So both Goral and Sarakar are in the enemy territory, and he's on a terrain feature. Uh, and that's gonna score me two for raise and pillage. 
going to also draw one new objective card. And I am going to draw three new power cards. The I activation get to inspire phase. Inspire him. Right. Yes. Right. You got one. One brother, of the kids can inspire. That's right. Which means I get to in the scoring end phase. phase yep. End phase. I get to score morbid majesty because I have three or more surviving friendly fighters who are inspired. Sweet. Discarding now and drawing up to fill up three objective cards and five power cards. And we're into the final turn of the game. Ready for... Round three. Four dice. Let's see who is going first. Initiative. Two crits. Well, I needed that. It is me again. <laughs> we have a whole bunch of things we can do here. Uh, and that's going to be a big choice. Well, I think we go with the boss, to be honest with you. We're just going to go with the boss, and he's going to charge, because I don't want to get ganged up on. Mm, do I charge, or do I just do I just kill you from where I am? <laughs> I, I just kill you from where I am. I'm actually going to go with the boss, and he's going to hit uh, the guy with the great weapon. And with my uh, upgraded spell blast now, it is three dice, two damage, looking for cleave. And Cleave will give me uh, the ability to ignore your shield, so you have to roll a crit. I got two hits. Well, then I get hit. That's I've a, rolled a the wrong die. Yeah. Oh, wait, I can Green dice only. You can roll a crit. You can roll a crit. And you do. No. no. So I ignore the shield, which means you take two damage. Yep. And I'm going to drive you back here, and these should all be gone. Well, that seems Taking good. two damage. Now, after I make a spell attack action, I can make the Raging Companion attack action, which I will do. Your boss. Now, it is three dice looking for swords. And only does one damage. Boss has two. Two dice looking for shields. Shields. All right. So let's see if I can hit you. I got nothing. All right. You got a crit. So now, you now super it stop it. Yeah. So now that is the end. You trigger any reactions from that uh, sequence. Reactions. Okay. Me neither. So we're into um, the power phase. And I'm going to buy an upgrade. And one to give uh, Kira. The Envenomed Spurs, action mutation, can be given to a beast, which means it's an attack action upgrade that can be given to a beast. Uh, reaction after this fighter's activation, if there's one or more enemy fighters adjacent, this fighter can make this attack action. Do you have any you'd like to make? Yeah, I might as well do some upgrading myself here. Okay. Uh, let's throw a Familial Bond on, oh, let's make it Thane. Hex towards the closest friendly fighter. So you can be pushed around basically after your activation's over. So I'm going to put it on... Yeah, it doesn't matter. Who and that costs you one of your glory. Uh, you flipped over the one. Okay. I'm going to then I'm gonna then play Violent Transformation. Choose one friendly fighter that is holding an objective token. Remove that objective token from the battlefield and give the chosen fighter one spirits token and one stagger token. So he's going to blow up basically this objective. He's going to gain a spirit token, which will beastify him, and a stagger token, because he's freaking out right now, which makes him easier to hit. Now that's going to trigger a surge, which is my uh, Oath of Ruin. Uh, you may reveal this card to serve your first turn, uh, and then return it to your hands. Uh, your warband removes an objective token in an enemy territory, or I take an inspired enemy fighter in enemy territory. I didn't reveal it, so I don't, I don't get the bonus glory point, because I forgot about it. So I only get one surge, which means I will immediately draw another card. And do you have any more ga or ploys or plots to play? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. I'm going to... I'm going to Spike of Terror. So I'm going to play Spike of Terror on your boss. And you get to pick two. Uh, I can either, I can push him, stagger him, or give him a move token. Okay. And you get to pick... This is on my boss? Yeah. You get to pick which two of those things happen to you. You can push him and give him a move token. I can push him and give him a move token? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to push him to there. Okay. And I'm going to give him a move token. So I can't move anymore this turn. I've been pushed. Another glory. And I'm going to put Trophy of Strength on Crimson Kira. So she gets plus one damage to her range one and two attack actions. Any other power cards for you? Yeah. Fearless Lunge. For good old uh, Marshall Falk here. So now he's got a range 2, damage 2 attack action. So you can do an alternate attack action that basically makes him vulnerable, but he can do it at range 2 instead of range 1. Yeah. Nice, that's right, he's pretty scary. It's a good one. It's good. Done now, so it's over to 
your activation, your first activation in the third round. Six to seven in glory right now. It is super close. It is super close. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can swing things a little bit and do kill my boss. <laughs> kill your boss. Yeah, that's that's gonna be a help. All right, fair um, enough. Um, he does like killing you with Hadoukens. Members of the support into yeah. So we'll do him. He'll do his lunge. His long range attack is he's supported by the boss, even yeah. though he doesn't have a token right now because he's base to base. Yeah. And hammers. I've got two looking for dodges from the boss, but I'm trapped, so you get a free success right now. Yep. Because I have nowhere I can be driven back to that's further away. So I got one dodge. And you get two successes. So you win. Yep. How much damage is that? That is two. Now it's gonna kill him. Hooray! You got the boss. So let's give you a glory. Yeah, and my reaction will be to place an objective. Smart to play a surge to play off that. So what's yeah. your surge? Uh, absolute monarch score immediately after an activation if the friendly leader is the only surviving leader. Oof. Well, I'm gonna play fierce competition plus one dice to the first attack action made by a friendly fighter next activation. That sounds bad. It is. Sounds, Anything else? Sounds real bad. Um, None for you? All right, so that ends the power step and it's my second activation. If you know this, but Crimson Kira was real fond of Sarakar, and so she's gonna charge. But first she's gonna beast out. So going into beast mode, so she gains, uh, when she's overcome, while this fighter has a spirit counter, plus one move, and she's a beast and can't be inspired, but she gains unleash on her berserk assault. She's grievous one and scything if I'm a beast. Charge, so I've got five movements, so one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna start stabbing. And when I have scything, I make an attack roll against everybody adjacent. In Wolverine Berserker mode. And because she's got fierce competition, the first one gets an extra, sorry, the first attack action made by this friendly fighter uh, in the next activation is going to be plus one dice. So I have five dice on this. And because of Trophy of Strength, I get plus one damage because it's range one. The first one into, I don't know, let's say your boss. My boss. Because it's five dice. So five dice looking for swords, but if I get a crit, it's bad. Uh, I got a crit and a sword. So you need to get a crit and a success crit to tie me. I got, nope, two successes. All right, so the crit trumps it. It also triggers Grievous, so three damage. And I will not drive you back. Make the four dice attack roll, because it's not my first attack action now. Into this guy with one wound. Yep. Uh, you are super supported right now, so I'm you count basic, basically everything. See if I get another crit. I do, a crit. I did not. All right, so he's also dead. So that's a second glory, or a first glory for that. And then the third side into this guy. These are all three damage, four dice looking for swords and or crits. She gets a crit and a sword. Why did I think she was one damage on her? So I think it's it is one damage, but it's plus one damage from Trophy of Strength and plus one from Grievous. It's not separate attacks. Nope. Grievous and the super attack. And now that ends my activation, so I'm going to make my Envenomed Spurs attack action yep. into him. Uh, it's not Grievous, but it is two damage. Dice looking for swords, and this is her mutation going off, and I might be able to kill your boss right now. Yep. Shabam! Uh, nothing. I live. She was super upset that you killed him. <laughs> uh, I am going to place objective tokens here and here from those killing those guys. My next activation is pretty simple at this point. Uh, Brave Sir Robin is going to bravely run away. <laughs> Zippy zoot. Uh, I'm going to go once, twice, thrice away. All right. Uh, I got nothing. Okay, I am going to play Spurt Onwards, uh, plus two move if I'm a beast, and one or more friendly fighters are not beasts, uh, but plus one if I'm just a beast. So I'm going to get plus one movement on Goral Spinehammer. I'm not going to play that card this turn. <laughs> it makes no sense for me to do that. I can catch him, but I can't catch him right now. I have to catch him next activation. So I'm just going to draw a card and gain Trophy of Fortitude. During my power step, I'm going to then attach Trophy of Fortitude. Takira, that's her third upgrade, which is gonna score me well rewarded. Score this immediately after you give a fighter the third or subsequent upgrade. It's a surge. And then I get to draw, so I get to draw another objective. Your third. Uh, yeah, and now correct me if I'm wrong, you can now make two move actions in an action. Actually move twice, that's right. I read that in the war comment. Right? Uh, that's this right. It's if you have one or more move tokens, you can't move again. So you're just gonna run away. Run away! 
Yay! Sick. So my last action to just cycle out Worthy Deed and see if I can grab another objective. And it won't do nothing for me. So it is over to uh, your final activation. Uh, and see if I can do that one. So discarding and drawing. And then we're in the end phase now. I won yep. the initiative. So I'm going to score a rapid raid, scoring an end phase of each surviving friendly fighters in enemy territory for one. And then I'm also going to score a true self, scoring an end phase of each surviving enemy fighter is inspired or a beast for one more. And I'm going to get one for vying for favor because all of my surviving fighters have a move or charge token. Nice. That's the end of the third phase. You're going to have nine total glory to my five, ten, twelve. And that puts the Gnarl Spirits in the lead for the final turn of the game with a final big play from Crimson Kira, yeah. taking down half the warband with her cleave. Berserker Barrage, basically. She goes all over yeah. and hulked out. That was crazy. That was wicked. So there it is. So that's the end of the third turn, and we've counted up our glory. Um, and now typically, if you're playing this in sort of like a competitive spirit or even a friendly game, you'd play the best of three, uh, and the best of three would give you sort of an overall result of who's done better in this competitive game. You just re-rack and set up again. Now for further sort of like expansions, we could deal in these decks. Uh, you could play these additional universal decks against the um, decks from the, uh, the sort of like core warbands, the actual rivals decks that they have, uh, and mix and match. So either of these decks can be played by either of these factions, and it gives you sort of like multiple ways to play and enjoy the box set uh, using different objective cards, different power cards, um, and sort of different ways to like align and play the game. Top of that, the Nether Maze expansions from the previous season of this are fully compatible compatible with Rivals decks and stuff with Gnarlwood, and any one of these could be additional warbands that you could take in to play the game, such as Hexbane's Hunters here or the new Gore Chosen of Drom. You can see the warbands are all different size, and they give you sort of like new characters, new abilities, new decks to play with, and can be mixed and matched freely with these other Rivals decks right here. So here we go, how to play and a run through of Gnarlwood, the newest edition of Warhammer Underworld. So hope you enjoyed that. And of course, if you're a veteran player and you just watch this to get sort of like a feel for the new game, you can also check out my um, GMG review of the rulebook, which should go a little more in depth on what's new and what's different. So big thanks for watching. We'll see you for more of these in the future. It's on a mash. Have a Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.